Epic Mickey is full of collectibles for the player to find and getting every single one of them can be a big challenge. Every corner of every area is bound to have something for the player to stumble across. But this video aims to make that challenge as easy as possible for any other completionists out there. And it's also just entertaining to watch. So here's what you need to know. There are 105 pins which are separated into 4 different categories. Bronze, Silver, Gold, and Special Pins. There are 20 Bronze Pins, 17 Silver Pins, 20 Gold Pins, and 48 Special Pins. There are also 36 film reels that you can find in every 2D projector level in the game. You need to get every film reel in order to get a couple of pins from the Usher and Mean Street. You'll only be able to get a maximum of 34 film reels in one playthrough as there are two points in the game where you have two different projectors to take. And for the sake of the video, I'm only going to tell you when to go to the Usher to claim your rewards only when you have enough film reels for the next reward. The three animatronic characters, Goofy, Daisy, and Donald, also have some pins tied to their quests. I'll tell you where to find all of their parts as we get to them, but if you miss any, then you can always buy them from the shops for 1,000 e-tickets apiece. You also need to free all 30 gremlins in order to get the gremlin guardian pin from Gus at the end of the game. I'll walk you through where all the gremlins are too. There are also 50 pieces of concept art that aren't displayed on the file select screen and aren't needed for any pins, but they still count as collectibles, so I would definitely say that the concept art counts for 100%. That probably sounds like a lot of stuff to look out for during your playthrough, but what makes getting every collectible so difficult in Epic Mickey is the fact that you actually need to do a minimum of 3 playthroughs to get everything. Because the game allows the player to make different choices throughout the game, the rewards you get will also change depending on what you do. There's a couple of times in the game where you'll have to make a decision on what collectibles you want to get first, which I'm going to call decision points. It'll be up to you which way you want to go for each decision point. Another thing I wanted to mention about decision points is that there are some points in the game where the player is given a choice to make, but only one path will actually give you collectibles. If this is the case, then I won't count it as a decision point, and I'll just tell you which path to take. Now that you know everything you need to know, let's get started at 100%ing Epic Mickey on a fresh save file. After defeating the mechanical eye, Gus will point out that a secret room opens on the floor below you. Head into that room to collect your first piece of concept art called Mad Doctor's Lab 2. Your first pin is also in a chest right next to the concept art which happens to be a bronze pin. In the Dark Beauty Castle Courtyard you will come across your first gremlin which is also the first choice the player has to make in the game. Free Gremlin Calvin to get your first gremlin and to get your first gold pin from him as well. Head over to this red tune door and thin it out to reveal a treasure chest which will contain your first special pin, the Dark Beauty Castle pin. And for the last collectible in Dark Beauty Castle until you return at the end of the game, thin out this tune ramp to get a piece of concept art called Dark Beauty Castle 1. Mickey and the Beanstalk is the first projector level in the game. This film reel is easy to get, you just have to jump into this chimney to grab it. The first area of Gremlin Village is called Slalom. Make sure to paint in all of the steam pipes so the Gremlin here will give you access to a piece of concept art called Tunnels. In the ticket booth area, repairing the teacup ride will open the door to a bronze pin inside of a chest. And behind the wall next to the thinner river is a piece of concept art called Spatter Springs Up. In the jungle boat ride, there are four Gremlins and two pins. The first Gremlin can be found behind the tune wall right next to the hippo and the sweeper. In this same room, there are four rotating gears with platforms on them. Paint in all four of them to gain access to a chest with a bronze pin. Make your way up to the upper level of the jungle boat ride because there are two gremlins on the upper level here. There is one on one side and one on the other. Near the end of the thinner river, there will be a piece of concept art on the highest platform behind the toon giraffe called Pirate Gate. The last of the four gremlins in the jungle boat ride will be on the bottom platform behind the giraffe. And because you freed all four of the gremlins in the area, they will help you get your first silver pin by extending a platform on the right side of the room. After meeting Small Pete, there's a couple of things to grab in the Asia boat ride. Make your way up the pagoda and free the gremlin who will make the area a bit easier to traverse. Next, you can jump across the thinner river to free this gremlin who will offer to close the whirlpool in the thinner in exchange for 100 e-tickets. Don't accept this offer because it'll make it harder to get a pin. If you decided not to pay the gremlin, then fix the gears yourself, which will not only close the whirlpool, but also give you access to a chest on top of the hallway which contains a bronze pin. Jump back on the boats and jump off here to paint in all of the gears on the wall, which will reveal a chest that contains a gold pin. Now that the fire bridge is raised, step on these two platforms to open the door to leave, but don't leave just yet. 
Paint in a cloud to jump over to a toon sun. Thin this out and you will find a piece of concept art called World of Gremlins 2. Finally, jump down into this room with a couple of spatters in it and spin a gear to free a gremlin. Enter the projector into Steamboat Willie Part 1. Just try to stay as high up as possible to get the film reel at the very end of the level. In the world of Gremlins comes our first decision point that revolves around Small Pete's ship log. You can find his ship log in a chest on his boat. If you take the ship log and either give it to Gremlin Bennett or keep it until you beat Small Pete again in the European boat ride, you will get the Small Pete pin from Big Bad Pete in Mean Street and you will also unlock a room in the Coliseum that has a concept art and a bronze pin. But you could also take the ship log and give it to Gremlin Shaky and he'll trade you the ship log for the Gremlin pin. If you ignore the ship log entirely then you won't get any collectibles so there's no point in doing that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's up to you which path you want to take as you'll still have at least two more playthroughs to get the other rewards. But there's a few more things to grab while we're in the world of gremlins. Fix Gus's house and go inside to find a bronze pin. Near the entrance from where you came from, thin out the wall and run through this hallway with this crushing machine thing to get a piece of concept art called World of Gremlins 1. Head over to the village clock tower and jump in the clock cleaners 1 projector to grab the film rail. Now make your way over to the windmill on the other side of the map and free Gremlin Ditto. Now you have another decision point. One of the two decision points in the game revolving around film reels. You can take the clock cleaners 2 projector in the windmill to get the film reel for that level, or you can take the Steamboat Willie 2 projector to get that film reel. Decide on what projector you want to take and you'll end up in the European boat ride. There's a silver pin that's much easier to get to if you take the windmill projector in the world of gremlins, but if you took the other projector then you can jump across some clouds to get to the chest. Finally, in the Colosseum, if you decided to do the paint path for the ship log quest, then a secret room will open that will contain a bronze pin and a piece of concept art called Inky Mickey. Take this Steamboat Willie 3 projector screen and make sure to get the film reel. The Clock Tower is the first boss in the game, and like every other boss in the game, also marks a decision point. Doing the thinner route will reward you with the Unwind the Clock pin, and doing the Paint Path will reward you with the Stop the Music pin. As much as I love this boss fight, that's all there is to do here, so let's move on to Mean Street. There's quite a bit to do in your first visit to Mean Street. This is the point where e-tickets finally become valuable as you'll need them to buy pins and concept art from shops throughout the game, so make sure you're collecting enough e-tickets throughout your playthrough. First of all, there's a few free floating collectibles around Mean Street, so let's run through those and then get into the more complicated stuff. There's a silver pin behind the train station. There's a gold pin on the roof of the museum. There's a bronze pin on the roof of Horace's detective agency, and you'll have to thin out this wall to get to it. And there's a piece of concept art on top of the train station that's appropriately called Mean Street. Now that those are out of the way, let's do some NPC stuff. If you helped Small Pete, then talk to Big Bad Pete to get the Small Pete pin. Then go to the Emporium and buy two special pins in a piece of concept art, those being the Welcome to Wasteland pin, the Gremlin Village pin, and Mickey Faces 1 respectively. All of this will cost you a total of 600 e-tickets, which you might not have right now, but don't worry. You can always come back to the shops later in the game once you've saved up more e-tickets if you're finding yourself short on cash. The first reward from the Usher is a bronze pin, which he'll give you if you've found at least 4 film reels, and if you've been following along then you should have 5. Now, the earliest time you can claim your final reward for getting all 36 film reels is in your first visit of Mean Street in your third playthrough. So let's double dip and say that you've gotten the cartoon buff pin as the final reward for finding every film reel. But we're still not done with the usher for our first visit of Mean Street because you'll need to get Captain Hook's sword from him and give it to the museum in order to get the swashbuckler pin. Finish up whatever business you might have left in Mean Street and take the through the mirror projector to get to Oztown. Make sure to get the film reel. As soon as you arrive in Oztown, you'll be greeted by Clarabelle, who offers you a decision point. If you talk to her again after her cutscene, she'll ask Mickey to help with an ice cream cake she's making for Horace. If you want to make the ice cream cake, you'll get two special pins, but you'll have to turn around back to Mean Street before you leave Oztown to go to Mickey Junk Mountain. Buy an ice cream from the ice cream parlor in Mean Street and bring it to Clarabelle, whose quest will continue after you return from Mickey Junk. Or you can just blow off the ice cream cake idea and bring Horace a pie later instead. Behind Clarabelle's house is a toon wall that you can thin out to find a piece of concept art called Hortensia's house. For Moody's safe quest, you can do the paint path so you can unlock a cutscene if you'd like, and the thinner path doesn't give you anything. 
Now help the telephone in Mickey's house by painting in all of the telephone boxes because the phone will give you a bronze pin and a quest that'll end up giving you a power spark later if you want it. And finally, talk to animatronic Goofy to start his quest for when you go to Tomorrow City. Jump into the Mickey's steamroller projector and get the film reel by staying above the steamroller. The area in Mickey Junk Mountain you start off in is called the Heaps. Run over to the giant phone and punch in the number 349. If you accidentally get the number wrong, you can hit the pound button or the hashtag button if you're not old enough. This will shut off a faucet spraying thinner next to you and will allow you to open a chest to get a silver pin. Go to the other side of the mountain and spin the switch on the side of this gumball machine to shut off another thinner stream, which will allow you to get the bunny children concept art. Now go across the map and jump across some floating Mickey merchandise to free Gremlin Kip who will also fix the crane for you. Now that the lunchbox is open, you can enter the Alpine Climbers Part 1 projector. As usual, get the film reel before you leave. Now you will be in an area of Mickey Junk called the Piles. Use thinner on the paint and thinner pump and ride the last rotating sprue down to find a chest containing a silver pin. There's a piece of concept art aptly titled Mickey Junk Mountain on top of a toy block in the middle of the thinner pool, which might be easier to reach once you've lowered the claws from the ceiling. You can free Gremlin Ronald to lower the claws, or you can punch in the number 512 on the giant phone if you want to do it yourself. Once the claws are lowered, jump across them to get to an elevation where you can find a gold pin and a little inset in the wall. Your business here is done, so jump in the Alpine Climbers Part 2 projector, collect the film reel, and you'll end up at the exterior of Mount Osmore Caverns. In the corner of the map there's a hidden basketball court that I made a video about one time. In this room you will find a gold pin and a piece of concept art titled Epic Mickey. Scale the side of the mountain to get Gilda's axe from the climbing hut, as we'll need it to help us get a few collectibles inside Mount Asmore Caverns, which is the next area. Before doing all of the projector challenges like the playing card guy says, thin out the Oswald carpet on the ground and drop into this tunnel. On the left side of the tunnel there will be a gate, and Gus asks you if you want to sacrifice Gilda's axe to open the gate. You can say yes to this because returning the climbing axe to Gilda doesn't give you any collectibles that we need. Or if you want to do the Gilda's axe glitch to get both rewards then you can get the collectibles in the secret room at the end of the game instead. Inside this room you can find a gold pin, a silver pin, and a special pin thematically titled the Mickey Junk Mountain Pin. Do all of the three projector levels and get all of their respective film reels. Before you enter the room Oswald is walking around in, you can find a piece of concept art right behind Oswald's throne. You should now be back in Oztown. If you brought Clarabelle ice cream earlier, talk to her to get the ice cream cake. Deliver it to Horace to get the Mean Street Romance pin, and talk to Clarabelle again after the delivery to get the Happy Birthday pin. If you didn't get the ice cream, then talking to Clarabelle will give you a pie instead, which you can bring to Horace for the pie delivery pin. While you're around Mean Street, you can talk to the usher who will give you a silver pin for having at least 12 film reels. And if you have the e-tickets, two more pieces of concept art will be available in the Emporium for 200 e-tickets each, those being Mickey Faces 2 and Thinner Falls. Round up some power sparks if you need to, go through the Plutopia Part 1 projector, get the film reel, and land in Tomorrow City. There's a building with a toon roof. Thin out the roof to free Gremlin Star, who will raise the Nautilus for you. Before you leave, make sure to get animatronic Goofy's torso from a chest that you can find by thinning out a toon part of the wall. Inside the Nautilus will be the Mickey's Mechanical Man Part 1 projector. Make sure to get the film reel as usual. The Nautilus will surface in the next area which happens to be called the Tomorrow City Lagoon. Get onto the highest level of the map to free a gremlin who will open the door to the next area and make the area easier to traverse as well. Now that all the thinner is shut off, the center of the map will have an inset with a caged gremlin. Freeing him will enable the UFO challenge, which involves fighting a bunch of blotlings on a sunken UFO across the thinner. Once you defeat all of the blotlings, you'll be rewarded with a bronze pin. Inside the Great Big Tomorrow, you will face your first slobber, and here we have a sort of pseudo decision point. Defeating the slobber with thinner will reward you with a gold pin, and using paint will give you a goofy part. If you want to save 1000 e-tickets, or if you're on a playthrough where you already got this gold pin, then I would recommend defeating the slobber with paint. Other than that, the thinner path will get you by just fine and you'll be able to walk away with a gold pin. After this, you'll unlock the TV sketch, which also gives you the TV pin, one of the few collectibles in the game that you cannot avoid collecting. Make your way through the Plutopia Part 2 projector and get the film reel. 
Tomorrow City Square has a few things to look out for so let's get hunting. There's a gremlin who's impossible to miss on top of a ramp just out the entrance. Thinning out the ground under the rails will reveal a tunnel. Paint in the tune gears and spin the inert gear in the middle to fix the sky tram. While you're on the lower level of the map, sneak along the back of the area and smash open this wall to unlock the Tomorrow City concept art. Since you fixed the sky tram already, jump on the cars hung up by a cable to make it to this little island. On this island will be a chest that contains another goofy part. Turn around and make your way up to the gears you spin to start the rocket ride. Turn left and free Gremlin Sparks who will do absolutely nothing. Fix the rocket ride by spinning the gears I just mentioned and ride one of the spaceships to get the last gremlin who will open the way to leave without costing you any TV sketches. And finally, in the hallway you take to exit, turn to the left and there will be a chest with a gold pin. Take the Mickey's Mechanical Man Part 2 projector and get the film reel. On the other side will be Space Voyage, which can be a little tricky to navigate thanks to the trams and the electricity. Fortunately, you'll have a few opportunities to disable some of the level's elements to make your life easier. Let's focus on the first floor before moving to the second floor. Go left from the projector you start the level from to free Gremlin Epsilon. It's a smart idea to free him before navigating the rest of the level because he'll let you turn off either the trams or the electricity on the first floor which will make everything so much easier. Continue walking around the tracks to find another gremlin that's inside a room with a car constantly smashing into the walls like it's a blind dog. Keep walking around the outside of the first floor to find another breakable wall that hides the Petronic concept art. You'll also probably stumble across some dog tags in a glass room. You'll need to give these to Horus when you return to Mean Street to get a special pin so make sure to grab those. That's all for the first floor so it's time to head up to the second floor. You can find a silver pin in a chest if you follow the bridge directly across from the elevator's entrance and turn right. On the opposite side of the map you can find a bronze pin behind a beetleworks generator. To find the last two collectibles here, you'll have to jump in these weird globe things to get onto a higher level. One side has the last part for Goofy, and the other side has a golden e-ticket on top of a TV sketch pad. If you put a TV sketch on it, a crane will activate that allows you to get another gremlin. The next area is the Petronic boss fight, which means you are presented with another decision point. If you defeat Petronic with Thinner, then you'll be able to talk to Big Bad Pete in Mean Street to get the Defeat Petronic pin. Likewise, if you redeem him with Paint, you'll get the Redeem Petronic pin from Big Bad Pete. But no matter what method you use to go about beating him, you'll get the Space Voyage concept art as a reward. Now that you're back in Mean Street, we have a few errands to run. Go to Big Bad Pete to get the pin you need for defeating Petronic with either Paint or Thinner. In the Emporium, there should now be a new piece of concept art called Mickey Faces 3 and a special pin called Tomorrow City Pin. If you missed any of animatronic Goofy's parts, the Emporium will now also have those in stock for 1,000 e-tickets apiece. Go across the street to Horus and give him the dog tags in exchange for a Power Spark and the Mystery Solved Pin. Talk to him again to receive a quest about going to Oztown to find a flower for Clarabelle. This is a perfect opportunity to talk to Animatronic Goofy and give him all of his parts, which will net you the Animatronic Goofy pin. Now just find the flower for Clarabelle and return to Horus one more time to claim the Symphony Sunflower pin. On your way to Ventureland, get the Jungle Rhythm Part 1 film reel. The next area is Ventureland, and you'll have to do three quests for Tiki Sam, Damien, Sol. Okay, I guess that needs some explaining, doesn't it? So Damien Salt and Henrietta are the only reason why you need to do a third playthrough to achieve 100% completion besides turning in the 36 film reel to the usher to get the film buff pin. So let's talk about Damien Salt right now because this is arguably the most confusing part of a 100% run. This chart shows all the rewards you get in Ventureland Visit 2 based on whether or not you gave Damien ice cream or flowers and whether or not you fixed the machine on Skull Island or ignored it. So basically, Damien's quest is a decision point and your choice here will turn into another decision point once you get to Skull Island. But we're in Ventureland Visit 1 right now, so let's focus on that. If you want to give Damien flowers, that means you'll have to go to Clarabelle and Oztown. Bringing Clarabelle the flowers will spawn three special pins in her house once the bouquet is finished. Once you bring Damien the flowers, you'll receive the Ventureland Romance pin, and Damien will move from his spot which lets you get a gold pin. So just from this quest alone, you can end up with five pins. Tiki Sam will also have a piece of concept art in a store called Mickey Spill. You should also talk to animatronic Daisy to begin her quest and to unlock the intro to Daisy cutscene. Do the rest of the boring quest required to open the exit and grab the film reel in the Castaway Part 1 projector. 
Tortuga has some pretty cool side quests that you can do to get a couple of extra pins. First, unlock the watch sketch which will automatically also unlock you the watch pin. Thin out one of the wooden doors to reveal a caged gremlin who will help get rid of the seers for you. If you haven't already, get the two other jail cell keys and free the other two pirates in the jail because freeing them activates two events around the map to get some bronze pins. For the first one, light three lamps around the map to make a chest rise from the thinner. And for the second one, go to the bottom of the well, hit the gear with your spin attack and another chest will rise up from the thinner. Once you've done everything you need to do, take the Jungle Rhythm Part 2 projector to get to the jungle and get the film reel on the way. The jungle seems like a small area, but it's surprisingly busy. And by that, I mean enemies and collectibles are everywhere. The first thing you'll come across is probably a red gem. You need five of these gems to unlock access to a daisy part, so look out for those while you're getting everything else you need. There's also three lamps hidden around the map, and painting in all three of them will open a door to Gremlin Buzz. Freeing Gremlin Buzz will permanently shut off the thinner flow and make the area much easier to traverse. Once the thinner is all drained out, you can find a chest with a gold pin in the riverbed. And for the actual main objective, make sure to defeat all of the enemies and find all of the symbols before talking to Starkey, not just one or the other. Doing both of these things will net you a special pin once you get back to Tortuga. Okay, now that that's over with, get the film reel from the Whaler's projector and you'll end up in Tortuga again. On the dock you started on in your first visit here, there will be a blue chest that has a daisy part. And before you leave, talk to Starkey to claim the pirate hero pin. Go through the Castaways Part 2 projector and get the film reel. Pirate Voyage is a very linear and enclosed area, so it's pretty easy to find the few collectibles that are here. In the area with the burning sky, there will be a chest and a small inset in the wall with a bronze pin. Make sure you don't skip past the gremlin in the next room, as he will open the gate to Rigger Green's trap. Rescue Rigger Green and take the silver pin from his room. At the end of the level you will have to go through the Shanghai projector, so get the film reel for that level as usual. We finally arrived at Skull Island, so if you're not sure what you want or need to do for the whole Damien thing I talked about earlier, then you should figure that out now. Here's the chart again if you need a refresher. But before you tackle the machine, get to the top of the cave you came from and a chest will await you with a silver pin. I should also mention now that if you decide to fill all four of the pumps with paint and then go into the room where the pirate beetleworks were spawning, you'll find a chest with a special pin called the pirate friend pin. While you're making your way around the island, there's a couple of things to look out for. In the thinner, there will be a big pointy rock with a tuned peak that you can thin out to reveal a gold pin. Along the side of the skull, thin out this wooden wall to get a piece of concept art called Sea Battle. At the very top of the island next to where Pete Pan is hanging out, you'll also be able to find an animatronic daisy part. Once you're sure you're ready to go, jump on the boat to get to the Jolly Roger, which is where the Captain Hook boss fight takes place. Like every other boss fight in the game, you're presented with a decision point. If you defeat Hook by making him walk the plank or by smashing him into a million pieces, then you'll get the Captain Hook pin. If you free the sprite to make him fight Pete Pan, then you can get another special pin from Big Bad Pete in Main Street. The Jolly Roger also has some collectibles to find while you're battling Captain Hook. A piece of the wall on the back of the ship can be broken with your spin attack, which will reveal a chest with a bronze pin. And on the stern of the ship, you can find a piece of concept art called the Animatronic Croc. Now we're back in Ventureland, and Smee will give you the animatronic daisy part if you use paint or thinner on the animatronic conversion machine on Skull Island, which happens to be the last of the four pieces. Talk to Daisy to give her all of her parts and to receive the animatronic daisy pin. Now it's time to finally tackle the three-way decision point from Ventureland Visit 1 and from the animatronic conversion machine. If you gave Damien Salt ice cream and ignored the machine on Skull Island, then talk to a pirate wearing blue clothes named Bosun Blake. He will give you a quest where you help him move into a treehouse. Once he's all settled in, he'll give you a silver pin as a reward. If you gave Damien flowers and ignored the machine, then Damien and Henrietta will have a quest about them moving into the same treehouse. Once they move into the treehouse, you'll get a silver pin, and you can also buy them a tiki mask from the shop to get another silver pin from them. And finally, if you gave Damien flowers and used paint or thinner on the machine, then Henrietta will be left alone on Ventureland without Damien. Which is very sad. But you can do a quest for her to get the ice cream pin by giving her ice cream. Also, with all the pirates gone, another shop will open up. In this shop, you can buy the Pirates of the Wasteland pin and a piece of concept art called Thinner Pump. There will also be a new NPC in Ventureland named Jim the Puzzled who will give you a few quests. 
If you do all of his quests, he'll give you a gold pin. Okay, that's enough of the Damien Salt and Skull Island decision point thing. Return to Mean Street, and if you did the paint path with a Captain Hook fight, then you can get a pin from Big Bad Pete called the Hook vs. Pete Pan Pin. The Usher will also have a new reward for finding at least 18 film reels, so talk to him to claim your gold pin. The Ice Cream Parlor will also have a new piece of concept art to buy, so head over there and get the Fantasyland concept art for 200 e-tickets. And finally, the Emporium will also have two new pieces of concept art in stock, so make sure to get Mickey Faces 4 and Balat Roar. Get all of the power sparks you need to fix the Bog Easy projector and get the Lonesome Ghost Part 1 film reel. For the main quest in Bog Easy, don't help the ghosts and help the residents instead because you won't get a reward for helping the ghosts. Get Lewis's badge of courage, paint in the lanterns around the town for Bertrand, and talk to Metairie to open the gate and to receive a gold pin. Talk to animatronic Donald to start his quest. On a small island in front of Lewis's shack is a piece of concept art that's pretty hard to miss. Before we leave, we have to help Ghost Ian with a quest and then we'll be ready to go to the Lonesome Manor. Talk to Ian, go into the shop to grab the book he asks for, and talk to him again. Now that that's all said and done, you can use the Lonesome Ghost Part 2 projector to leave. Make sure to get the film reel as usual. We are now outside the Lonesome Manor. Behind the Spladooshes and to the left will be a chest with a bronze pin. Make your way up the hill, meet the Mad Doctor, and climb up to the balcony of the manor. On the right side, you can thin out a window to find a piece of concept art called Lonesome Manor 2. On the left side, you can find a chest that contains the anvil sketch, which will automatically give you the anvil pin. There's also a window you can thin out on this side that has a gremlin to free. Open the front door to the manor and take the Mad Doctor Part 1 projector to go inside and get the film reel. You should now be in the Lonesome Manor foyer. First of all, you can find the Lost Colonel Pete tapes that Big Bad Pete asks you to find before you leave for Bog Easy. This doesn't actually give you any collectibles that we're looking for, but it can affect the ending cutscene if you helped all the other Pete's, so I figured I would mention it just in case. But back to the main collectibles. On the right side of the first floor, you can find a silver pin and a chest among the Spladooshes. Ride the flying tables up to the Chernabog painting and thin it out to reveal an inset in the wall. In here you can find a piece of concept art called Lonesome Manor 1 in a caged gremlin. There's actually two ways to open the exit in the foyer, but neither of them give you any important collectibles, so choose whichever path you want. Behind the gate on the second floor will lie the Haunted House Part 1 projector. Jump in, get the film reel, and jump out to land in the stretching room. Man, I hate the stretching room. Usually I just free the gremlin to solve the puzzle for me, but we can't do that just yet because there's two collectibles we actually have to use our brain to get. On the third level, there's a gold pin in a chest and a piece of concept art. The gold pin is behind the painting with the gravestone, and the Mad Doctor concept art is behind the painting with the hunter dude. Now we can drop back down to the second level and thin out the painting with the dude in his underwear, spin it around a few times, and free the gremlin who will solve the entire puzzle for us. Use the Mad Doctor Part 2 projector and get the film reel to travel to the library. Just like the jungle from Ventureland, the library seems small, but there's quite a bit to get done here. It's a smart idea to do Madame Leona's side quest before painting in all the skulls to open the exit, because she'll help us defeat a slobber if we do her side quest first. Her two side quests involve fixing four paintings around the library and grabbing six flying books, so let's do those first. Fixing all of the paintings will net you the Art Appreciator pin, and collecting all of the flying books will give you a silver pin. Or you could just free a gremlin and pay him 50 e-tickets and he'll get all the books for you. Just make sure you don't spray any thinner on any of the books because Madame Leona will withhold the silver pin from you if any of the books are destroyed. Now that we got that done, you can paint in the three skulls to open the exit, or you can wait until we have the rest of the collectibles from here first if you want. On the right side of the first floor will be a thinnable wall that hides a Donald part. Now climb all the way up into the rafters. There will be a caged gremlin who will offer to help you in the Mad Doctor boss fight that's coming up if you free him. There will also be a piece of concept art called Library behind a spider web on the opposite side of the room. Finally, make sure to get the hatchet for Horace's quest, which is in a chest above where you started. Fun fact, the hatchet quest is actually the only quest you have to complete in order to get Horace's good ending cutscene. And you get a special pin from him when you bring it back to him, so that's why we need it. Once everything is done, you can take the haunted house projector while getting the film reel to get to the ballroom. 
In the ballroom, the game presents you with the option to help the pipe organ calm down or to make him even more angry by destroying his keys. Even though the quests back in Bog Easy change depending on what you do here, there's no important collectibles to get in Bog Easy if you make the pipe organ angry. So just play the music for him to do the pain pass. For playing the pipe organ song, you'll get a special pin called the Play a Tune pin. Now you can climb the pipe organ to get to the second floor. Thinning out the wall on the left side will reveal a caged gremlin, and thinning out the wall on the other side will reveal a chest with a bronze pin. And in the middle, you'll find a blue chest with a Donald part. There's one more gremlin here on one of the pipe organ's pipes that you need to free, and it can be a little tricky to make the jump, but once he's freed, you can be happy that you've now freed all 30 gremlins in the game. This gremlin will offer to help you with the Mad Doctor fight just like the gremlin from the library but for 100 e-tickets instead of for free. Whenever you're ready to leave, take the Haunted House Part 3 projector and get the film reel as always. The Lonesome Manor Attic is home to the Mad Doctor boss fight. However, this boss fight doesn't actually count as a decision point, as whether you do the paint path or the thinner path, you'll get the same exact pin. But Gus will still give you a paint or thinner upgrade, so if you want a paint upgrade then you can do the paint path and likewise for the thinner path. Defeating the Mad Doctor will net you the Mad Doctor pin. Another Donald part will also be up in the rafters for you to jump up to. Just behind the Mad Doctor's snow globe, you can find the Mad Doctor pod concept art. And on the other side, above the projector you take to leave, you can find a gold pin and a chest. After the Mad Doctor is defeated, head back to Bog Easy and get ready to do some more errands, assuming you did the paint path or the pipe organ. As soon as you jump out of the projector, a ghost will give you the last piece of Donald, so talk to Donald and assemble him to unlock the animatronic Donald pin. If you're interested in unlocking all of the movies in the extras menu, then you should also do Donald's side quests, as there are two cutscenes that play specifically for his side quests. You can finally talk to Ian again to get the well-read pin for helping him return that book to Madame Leona too. Metairie will have a quest about painting in all the bridges in Bog Easy for some reason, so do that for her and she'll give you a bronze pin. You also need to talk to Bertrand to help him reopen his shop by finding his sign. Once his shop is ready for business, you can buy the Lonesome Manor pin. Something interesting about the Lonesome Manor pin is that for some reason, even if you bought the pin in a previous playthrough, this pin will appear back in the shop as if you've never bought it before. Buying this pin more than once will only affect the counter on the file select screen though. Anyway, Bertrand will also carry the Bog Easy concept art, so buy that too. Now you can return to Mean Street and talk to Gremlin Marcus who will tell you that if you have 30 power sparks he can open a secret room somewhere in Mean Street. And yes, you do actually need to round up 30 power sparks because this secret room is the apartment above the fire station that belongs to none other than Walt Disney himself. In this room you can find two golden e-tickets and a piece of concept art called Mickey and Oswald. While you're out and about Main Street, make sure to return the hatchet to Horace and you'll get the case closed pin. And as usual, the Emporium will have some more things in stock, this time just the Main Street pin. Once you're positive you're all set to go, go to Mickey Junk Mountain and you'll end up back in Oswald's Fortress. This time there'll be a piece of concept art called Oswald Poses on top of a giant Mickey toy on the left side of the room. Use the Ye Olden Days projector to get to the Shadow Blast Arena and make sure not to miss the film reel that's in here. Of course, the Shadow Blast boss fight offers a decision point. Befriending the Shadow Blast using paint will unlock the Me and My Shadow pin, and defeating the Shadow Blast using thinner will unlock the Shadow Boxing pin. In the Shadow Blast Arena, there's actually a piece of concept art in the corner of the map that can be missed if you're focused on the fight, so make sure to grab that during the fight. Now the Storm Blot is free, and you'll have to deal with the Blotticles in Oztown and then Mean Street. Once the single Blotticle in Mean Street is gone, a pin will appear called the Repair Mean Street pin. You can also get a piece of concept art from the Usher for having at least 30 film reels. Now just take out all of the Blotticles in Ventureland and Bog Easy, and when you get back you'll find the No More Blotticles pin in front of the projector to Tomorrow City. Which is a very interesting name for this pin, considering that you still haven't beaten the Blotticles in Tomorrow City yet. But before you go to Tomorrow City, it might be smart to check all of the shops to make sure you didn't miss out on any purchases from any of them. Once you're confident that you're ready to move on, wave goodbye to Mean Street, take care of the Blotticles in Tomorrow City, and crash the Moonliner rocket in Dark Beauty Castle. 
Once you drain the thinner, you can thin out a Toon Oswald statue against the wall to find a bronze pin. Near the crashed rocket, you can also find a piece of concept art called Mad Doctor's Lab 1. That's all there is for the lab, so take the Sleeping Beauty projector and get the film reel. You know how I mentioned all the way back in the world of Gremlins that there are only two decision points in the game revolving around film reels? Well, the throne room is home to the second one, because there are two projectors that you can take to get to the next area depending on what you do here. If you light the activation crystal in the center of the room by spinning the gargoyles, then you can take the Fantasia Part 1 projector and you'll get a special pin from Oswald in the fireworks control tower. If you destroy the chandelier in the middle of the room, then the wall will smash open to reveal the Fantasia Part 2 projector. But let's get the other collectibles here first. In the air above the entrance will be a gold pin. To get this pin, just get up to the second floor and thin out the ground beneath you so you fall onto the pin. At the end of the hallway with a bunch of blot tentacles attacking you, thin out the floor and jump in the hole to grab the throne room concept art. And in the other hallway, the one with the rolling boulder, thin out the wall to get the Oswald and Hortensia concept art. Once you're ready to go, take whichever projector you need to take depending on whether or not you fixed or destroyed the throne room. In the next area, you'll meet Oswald on the fireworks control tower. If you did the paint path for the throne room, then talk to Oswald a few more times and he'll give you the Oswald pin. Behind the computer console, you can find a piece of concept art called Sleeping Hortensia. The corridor you have to go through next is called Utilidor 4. On the right side of the wall, there will be a patch of toon that reveals a hole in the wall only accessible via a raised chandelier. In here you'll find the Dark Beauty Castle 2 concept art, which is actually the very last collectible I needed to complete my 100% playthrough because I missed it so many times. You can then drop down and find a chest containing a silver pin, or you can continue through the Utilidor a little bit and thin out the wall on your right side to get there as well. The first of the three towers you have to activate the crystals in is called Sorrow Tower. After you activate the crystal, there will be a concept art called Horned Blot in the room with the projector. Take the Fantasia Part 3 projector and don't miss the film reel. Before scaling Grief Tower, turn around and paint in a chest behind the projector you just jumped out of to find a gold pin. On your way up the tower, look for a piece of concept art fittingly titled Blot Attack 1 on the right side of the spiraling ramp. Activate the crystal at the top of the tower just like before and there will be another piece of concept art in the room with the projector. Take the Fantasia Part 4 projector, which is actually the last projector in the game. To get the film reel, you'll have to wait for the water to rise so you can jump on a floating barrel to get to it. Like I mentioned all the way back in Mean Street Visit 1, this final 36 film reel can only be turned in in another future playthrough, since at this point in the game you can't return to Mean Street anymore. The last tower here is called Lost Tower. On your way up, you'll have to go through a couple of rooms full of blot links to fight in order to progress. On the platform with the entrance to the third combat room, you can drop down to another platform directly beneath it to find a chest with a gold pin. After activating the crystal at the top of the tower, the blot will start destroying the tower floor by floor. There's actually a piece of concept art in one of these floors, so pay attention because it's very easy to miss. The concept art will be on the fourth floor from the top, which is right after the floor with a bunch of thinner refills. Once you make it to the bottom, a chest will await you with the Skydiver pin. The next corridor you have to run through is called Utilidor 7. This area has lots of tricky jumps, so be careful. While you're platforming across the chandeliers, you'll find a free floating silver pin, which is the last silver pin in the game. But don't get too excited because right after this you'll have to make a pretty difficult jump in order to get some collectibles. As the corridor is collapsing, jump to the upper level and you'll find a chest with the last gold pin. There's a hole right behind the chest, but don't jump in just yet, as just around the corner you'll find a piece of concept art called Blot Attack 2. Navigate through the rest of the corridor, and once you reach the end, Mickey will jump into the Blot, which is where the rest of the game takes place. There's still a couple of things to grab in here though, so don't tap out just yet. Gus will meet back up with you, and if you manage to rescue all 30 gremlins in the game, then he will graciously award you with the Gremlin Guardian pin, which is the last special pin in the game. After talking to Gus, jump down and you'll find a thinned out chest that contains a bronze pin, which is the very last pin in the game. 
And last but not least, in the giant room that holds Mickey's heart, look for a ledge to drop down onto near the huge pit in the center of the room. On this ledge you will find the Lonesome Manor 3 concept art, which is the last piece of concept art and also the last collectible in Epic Mickey. Now just finish off the blot and watch the ending. Well, that covers every collectible required to 100% Epic Mickey. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's going to take a minimum of 3 playthroughs to be able to actually collect everything. But if you need a refresher on any future playthroughs, you can always rewatch parts of the video too. I also want to take this time to say simply thank you for checking this video out. This took a really long time to put together as I'm sure you can imagine. And if you want more Epic Mickey content, then you can check out the rest of my videos on my channel. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more Epic Mickey content. That's all I have to say for right now, so hopefully I'll see you guys around. Alright, this is a long script. We're gonna get through all of it right here, right now. No retakes, no mistakes. You'll only be able to get a maximum of 34 film reels in one playthrough, but for the sake of the video, I'm only going to tell you... Oops. You also need to free all 30 gremlins in order to get the... Oops. Now that you know everything you need to know, let's get started on 100%ing... Blech. Head into that room to collect your first piece of concept, concept art. Head over to this red tuned door and thin it out to reveal a treasure chest which will contain your first special... <sighs> Make sure to paint in all the steam pipes up... <sighs> and behind the wall next to this... <sighs> if you decided not to pay the gremlin then fix the gears yourself which will only close... No. <sighs> if you decided not to pay the gremlin then just... Oops. In the world of gremlins comes our first decision point that revolves around Small Pete's ship log. No, oh, I don't like that. In the world of gremlins comes our first decision... <laughs> now wake... <laughs> now wake your way over. <coughs> and in the Colosseum, if you decided to do the paint path for the ship log quest, then a secret room will open that will contain a... Secret room... Okay. Oh, I'm gonna screw this up so bad. There's quite a bit to... <laughs> now, the earliest time you can claim your final reward for getting all 36 film reels is in your first visit of Mean Street in your third playthrough. So let's double dip and say that you've gotten the cartoon puff... P cartoon puff. Now, the earliest time you can claim your... Oh. If you want to make the ice cream cake, you'll need... Now help the telephone in Mickey's house by... There's a piece of concept art aptly titled Mickey Junk Mountain on a top on... Scale the side of the mountain to get Gilda's axe from the climbing hut because we'll need it to help us get a few concept arts... Oops. Before doing all of the projector challenges that the playing card like... What the fuck did I write here? Or if you want to do the Gilda's axe glitch to get both rewards and... Uh... Deliver it to Horus to get the Mean Street Romance pin and talk to Clarabelle again after the... The Nautilus will surface in the next area which happens to be called the Stamara City... the Stamara City Lagoon. Other than that, the thinner path will... After this you'll unlock the TV sketch which also... Turn around and make your way up the gears you spun to... Oh, I see. The next area is the Petronic boss fight, which means you are presented with another dif diffusion diffusion point. I don't know, dude. But no matter what, no matter what. On your way to Venturland, get the jungle r jungle with him. Bringing Clarabelle the flowers will spawn three special pins in her house. Mm. First, unlock the watch sketch, which will also automatically give you the watch pin. No, I don't. I don't like that. For the first one, light three maps around the map. Three, yeah. On the dark, the dark. Once you're sure, you're, okay. Now we're back in Ventureland. I fucked that up, didn't I? Return to Mean Street, and if you did the paint path for the Captain Hook fight, then you can find a pin from Big Bad Pete from, fuck. The Usher will also have a new reward for finding at least 18 film, bleh. For the main quest in Bog Easy, don't help the ghosts and help the residents instead because you won't. First of all, you can find the lo the. Uh. Oh, I need water. Water. Okay, I'm ready. Spin it, if 
Use the Mad Doctor Part 2 projector to get a film reel and... Okay, hold on. Use the Mad Doctor pro... I fucked it up again. Oh, oh god. On the right side... There will be a gauge... A... I haven't fucked up more voice lines in any room of the game besides here. There will also be a piece of... Dude, you gotta be kidding. Once everything is done, you can take the haunted house projector while getting the film reel to get the ball... Just when I thought it was over, dude. There's one more gremlin here on one of the... Or <laughs> After the mad doctor is defeated, head back to Bog Easy and get ready to do some more errands. Now oh, I'm gonna redo that. As soon as you jump out of the projector, a ghost will give you the last piece of Donald... I should talk slower. If you're inter- if you- I wrote if you're interesting in unlocking, alright. Something interesting about this pin is that for some reason, even if you bought it in a- Once you're positive, you're all set to go. Go to Mean Street- Oh, we're already in Mean Street. Once the single blotticle in Mean Street is gone, a pin will appear called the Repair Min- I don't know what I'm saying, man. The concept art will be on the fourth floor from the top, which right after... Oh, okay. Once you make it to the bottom, a chest will erase... While you're platforming... I'm gonna redo that.